Thank you for joining us here at BLC. Our purpose is helping people discover and develop a life in Christ. Now here is Pastor Gary Tony. Come to part two of Live Inspired. Now, before I get into this, I, th- I think it's fitting as I was putting, you know, my notes together for today's talk, knowing it is Baptism Sunday. I thought it fitting that uh, we talk about living an inspired life. I think that's one of the, 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 uh, the most wonderful things that a believer can do once you get the revelation of, of what baptism is, is that you, you take that step because God will inspire us to be examples for him in every aspect of our life. And I think baptism is something that we do that not only honors God, but you know what? It, 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 it really, it does inspire other people. No? Y'all okay? All right. Okay. Well, let's get into it then, okay? Since you're going to be like that, we'll just get right into it. We'll just deal with business right out of the gate, okay? The, the prophet Isaiah. Now, we're talking about you living an inspired life. Not today inside these four walls. I mean, we, we're all good at, at doing the things of God when we gather in here. I'm talking about tomorrow, about two o'clock, you know, when one of your coworkers really just did what they probably shouldn't have. You know the deal, right? Maybe a client, maybe, uh, you know, somebody in traffic, whatever it might be. I think that the real challenge for the believer to live this inspired life is m- Monday through Saturday. Yeah. And, and so the prophet Isaiah says it like this in chapter one, if you are willing and obedient. Notice that he says if. See, far too many of us, we like the comforts and securities of just putting it back on the Lord. Well, if, if, if it's God's will, it'll just happen. According to the prophet Isaiah, it won't. And who inspired, we're, we're talking about living inspired, who inspired Isaiah to write? God did, the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you're willing and obedient. So he's not just going to make you do it. You have to participate. It's just like giving your life to Christ. He's not going to make you. It's just like being baptized. He will not make you do it. But man, taking these simple steps of faith, those are the things that will inspire other people. And this is what God is wanting us to understand and not just embrace as a reality, but put into practice in our daily walk. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The message paraphrase says it like this. If you willingly obey, say willingly. Willingly. When when I ask y'all to participate in something, it's everybody. Say willingly. willingly. Oh, yeah, see, that's much better. Yeah. See, our online family, they want to hear you. Yeah. See, but here's the deal. When we talk about Old Testament stuff, the number one rule, and I've taught you this for years, you know this, you have to interpret this through the the, the New Testament covenant that you and I are under. See, Isaiah is not saying from some religious, legalistic viewpoint, if you're willing and obedient. God wants you obedient because you're a new person in Christ. You have a new way of living now. Remember, we've talked about this, like a fish out of water. Yeah, you're designed to live a new way now, and it's obeying God. Now, understand, God knows this is why his grace and mercy is new every day on our lives. He knows that we're all going to fail miserably at this. But as we grow in our relationship with him, we find ourselves not out of obligation, but just because there's this transformation that takes place, we find ourselves being more obedient. How many of you can relate to that? You're more, you know, it, hopefully if you're growing in your relationship with Jesus, you are more obedient, not because you have to. That's just because that's the person you are becoming. Yeah. See, living an inspired life, it literally does start with a willing heart. You've got to be willing to do things differently, to trust God. And like we said last week, our father, he is actually waiting on us to take our next steps in a life, remember, that he's already seen that we could have. God does have a wonderful plan for every person that belongs to Jesus. But it's up to us to discover and to implement that life. And sometimes it will be taking steps of faith into areas that might be a little uncomfortable, a little challenging, unfamiliar, 
You know, I was thinking yesterday, well, you know, we're routine people, aren't we? I know, uh, not, maybe not everybody, but for the most part, we are routine people. And, and we all have our routines, and we go through different things, and I was thinking about that. And, and, and I know, man, when we get challenged to step into something that we're not comfortable with, for example, my wife, I know, honey. <laughs> she could talk to that pole. I'm not kidding. She, she's comfortable. Sherry, what are you laughing at? You the same way. But, but they have that personality. They're, they can talk to anybody, and they're good at it. I suck at it. I, I'm, I, it's, it's, you know, now, I, as a pastor, I, I make myself do it. But if I got, Cody, if I got to pick, I would stay in the back room with a cup of tea or something until it's time for me to take the stage. But that's not a good example, is it? I got to get out and talk to people and, and, and you know. But it takes me out of my comfort. What, what takes you out of yours? So, so now listen, some of you, so, some of you are of this mindset, well, nothing takes me out of mine because I do what I want. You obviously haven't been married very long. Yeah. See, when we take our steps of faith in this God-designed life, that's when we begin to discover and we begin to find, our, we, we find ourselves living inspired let me ask you this this morning. What if, now you think about this, Rick. What if every day, what if we started our day with this expectation that today's going to be one of those days that I step into something that God has designed for me? What if you think that way? Maybe if you got your faith to the place where you're not moved by the circumstances and everything doesn't go right. You get up and, I mean, right out of the gate, you know, stuff goes wrong. Burn the toast. Simple stuff, you know. My day started pretty good. I had somebody give me some M&Ms this morning. I'm, I'm like, Jesus, praise the Lord. I'm like, I'm, I'm like can y'all do another worship song? So I, can get... I know some of y'all think, well, M&Ms, what's the big deal? Maybe nothing to you, but it's like a drug to me. <laughs> but praise the, praise the Lord, she gave me a little pack. I, I'll eat that in two bites. <laughs> anyway. What if we started our day expecting God? See, so often what happens is because, we, Roger, we're busy people, man. We're just busy with stuff, and, and, and we, we wait to the last. How many, how many of you are snooze button people? <laughs> wow, that's more than I thought, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a snooze button. My wife just, she, she, she gets up before me, and she starts making noise. Turns on lights. I don't like lights in the morning. I'm, she's a leaper. I'm a creeper. I'm slow out of the gate. And, and, and so, you know, getting up on purpose with the design that you're, you're going to, today's going to be one of those days, regardless of how it unfolds, you're expecting God to do something in your life. Is that a radical thought? I think as believers, I believe God has designed us. We're built to be like that. But we have to stay open to this reality that there's something that God's going to do through every one of us, one, all of his children that are willing and obedient. If you're willing to live an inspired life, you're a candidate that God can use. But if you're not, if you're just going to do the same thing you always do, and Lord, I love you, I want to go to heaven, but don't interrupt me, then it's going to be difficult for him to use you. You know why? Because you're not, go ahead and say it, willing. Forget the obedient part. I, well, maybe not forget it because I know some people, they're not willing, but they're obedient because they feel like they're obligated. No? Yeah, we do. I, I know, I know can, I, can I be your pastor for just a second? I know church folk. You didn't want to come volunteer today. But out of obligation... Because you, you, you that, bless God, that's who I am. I stick to my word. And praise God for that. But l the Lord looks upon the heart of a man, right? Yeah. And he's waiting for each one of us to say, okay, Lord, here I am. What you need? 
Something simple, something, whatever it might be. Now, he's, he's not going to ask you to do something crazy radical if you can't go across the street. Huh? So stop freaking out about that. I don't, I don't know if I want to volunteer because he may ask me to preach. No, he won't. <laughs> well, no, no. He doesn't start with preaching. Okay? Just, let's just clarify some stuff. He doesn't start with that. You know, when, when, my, uh, when my ministry started, I remember the day I found out about ministry. I had no idea that there, I know, knew nothing about ministry. I, Tracy and I, you all know our testimony. We were older when we gave our lives to Jesus. And then I had this pastor that was just, well, he was kind of rough and harsh. Uh, I've told you all this story before. There was one, one particular Sunday. I, I did, <laughs> Rex, I was his sound guy. And he, he, would, he would always tell me to do stuff. He'd be in the front. He'd send an usher back. And, I, and, I, and finally, I got, it was one Sunday night. I'd had enough of it, Chad. And I'm like, you tell him I'm going to meet him in the parking lot after church. <laughs> I'm, now, you understand, I'm still, I'm still growing in the things of God. I'm new at this stuff, you know. But I'd had enough of him, man. And some, you know, some of the old redneck came out. And I'm like... I, we dealing with this. Yeah. Oh, at the time I meant it, yeah, I didn't know any better. I didn't know anything. I, I didn't know that God had put me in his life for this guy to be that structured and direct in my face because that's what I needed. I had no idea I had a call into the ministry. I didn't know what that was. And so when I began to discover these things, taking those steps of faith, a lot of it was uncomfortable and new to us. You know, we couldn't just, I mean, we had, we went to Oklahoma. You know, whatever. You, I personally loved it. I didn't want to leave. But the Lord had other plans for me. And so here we are. Anyway, my point is this. You, are, are you willing to do stuff? I, I, I told you all that to tell you this. I didn't start out preaching. I started out cleaning bathrooms. Greeting people, ushering, and I, you know, I didn't even want to talk to people. That's why I got in the sound booth, because I could get up in my little, my little bubble. Yeah. See, we have to stay open to this reality. God is looking to use his people. And, and please understand something. The book of Acts, uh, James also says it. The apostle Paul makes it clear, Moses. But I love Peter's statement in the book of Acts chapter 10. He says this, I see very clearly that God shows favoritism to nobody. God doesn't pick out superstars. You discover superstar in you. When you take steps of faith, you see, we are, I believe Peter's right, we are this chosen generation of royalty. We are fearfully and wonderfully made people of God. At the end of the day, it simply comes down to this. Are you willing to do the things? To make the right choice. You remember last week out of Deuteronomy when we talked about this? God actually says this, I call heaven and earth as a witness to the choice you make. See, God is, is warning us and he makes it very clear. He gives us these wonderful instructions on the right choice to make. But we don't always make it, do we? But it's up to us. And what's interesting, the book of Deuteronomy lets us know, he makes it clear that heaven and earth, he calls them as a witness to the choice. We, I wonder if we're going to be held accountable to our choices. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Jesus said, you're going to give an account for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. Dang. What about that? Now, thank God for his grace and mercy. But that doesn't mean you're not going to have to have a conversation with Jesus about it. It's like, listen, that stuff right there, that, remember I, I dealt with you back in 2012 and 13 and then again in 15, huh? And you're still hard-headed. Yeah? See, the, this is why the Apostle Paul, he reminds us, hey, guys, make the most of every opportunity. See, as believers, God is looking for people that will be on purpose about our life with him. 
But in order to do that, to live this inspired life, there are going to be those times when we have to step out beyond our own abilities. And like we, we introduced our talk with last night, we have to, last week, we have to trust, we have to delight in, and we have to commit our way to the Lord. Trust, delight, commit. That's our key text that, that we really built this whole series on in Psalm 37. Let's go there and check this out. Psalm 37, 3, it says this, trust in the Lord. Do good. Do, did, did y'all get that? Do good. You know, you know, the Bible actually tells us that we are to overcome evil with good. <laughs> That's a tough one right there, man. Because sometimes we want to we wanna overcome evil with yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, you, you said it right. Yeah. We want to get them, don't we? Yeah. But God says overcome evil with good. Huh? Trust in the Lord. Do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. See, this, this dwelling in the land means that you and I are to occupy as believers here. We're the one that should be the example in our neighborhoods, on our jobs, at Kroger. Hmm? Yeah. I know some of y'all got all that together, man. You're so awesome. I'm still working some of that stuff out, you know. Sometimes I'll, I'll see somebody in Kroger and I'll go the other aisle. Like, oh, man. <laughs> now I know y'all would never do that, right? Lord, please don't let him come down this aisle, please. <laughs> That's really not the prayer, you know. Just maybe he's wanting to use you to... Trust in the Lord, do good, dwell in the land, feed on his faithfulness, delight yourself in the Lord. Now, remember, we talked about this word last week. It means that we, we are to have this humble, reverent approach. We are to be captivated with the presence of the Lord. It is our pleasure to be in his presence. Delight yourself in the Lord. Now, now you may not be there yet. You, you may not be at the place where you're enjoying. It still may be some labor for you to get into the presence of God because you have so much stuff weighing on you, so, many, so much baggage and things. That's why you need to take some time and step back for a second. And if you've never done this, your carnality will fight you. If you're used to having noise all the time, you got to have something going on in the background, then... then, then it will, you, you will struggle with this. And so just let me encourage you this morning. What I would like for those of you that are, are uh, having a hard time with this delighting in the Lord part of your, your journey of faith. It starts with one little simple step of faith. The first thing you do is you ask God to give you the strength. Are you ready for this revelation? To be quiet. To turn everything off. I, I know some of you, you got to have your favorite worship song. I, nothing wrong with that. But there are times when your favorite worship song gets in the way of what God is trying to speak to your spirit, not your intelligence. See, the thing about a good worship song is you want to sing with it. I mean, even if it's the instrumental version, because you know the song, because I love instrumental music when I'm praying. But sometimes when the song comes on that I know, all of a sudden I, I, I step right out of praying and now I'm. I'm singing the song. And, and, and it's like, Gary, um, Elevation Worship sings that song. I, I didn't ask you to sing it. <laughs> Sometimes turn everything off. I, I just don't have that moment. Mm, no, I'm not buying that for a minute. Make a moment. A lot of the people, because as a pastor, I talk to people about these things. One of the, this is one of the big ones I get. Pastor, I just don't have time. What, a, what about the five episodes of, you don't, you don't have time. Yeah, but it's my favorite. <laughs> what, what, about, what about the ball game, you, you know? Uh, listen, the Lord has dealt, I done been down them roads, okay? Now, as we highlight some of the stuff in your own life, do not let the enemy get in your head and bring condemnation. This is, the Lord doesn't work that way. He'll bring something up, and then he'll sit down and laugh with you about it. Like, you remember when you did that, BJ? <laughs> you know, dude. See, God, God you, it's not like he's surprised that you're, he knows everything. You understand that, right? He's never been shocked. So he loves you, but he brings this stuff up for maybe the thousandth time because he's trying to get us to this new place because 
we've got this life that he's designed for us. He's going to use you this week to inspire someone. And so when you take the time to delight in his presence, he says he'll give you the desires of your heart. But then he throws this word in there. Go on, say it. Commit. No, say it like you mean it. Commit. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we definitely don't like this one. Mm-mm. Commit. Mm-mm. No. It's, it's, it's like Kate was telling me in the lobby, we were talking about Andy. I know, right? But he, Andy shot her in the face. What was that thing called? A bazooka ball. He shot her more than once, right? And in my mind, I'm like, I know he did that on purpose, man. I said, he would have never done that on purpose, Kate. <laughs> but, listen, guys. See, when, when you, I believe he was committed to the shot. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I believe he was dialed in. He's like, man, I'm going to get her. Now, listen, if you can't have fun with your wife, then you got issues, man. But now Kate, she probably, she probably fired right back at him. Lots of times. She just can't, she just can't shoot. <laughs> no, no I'm, just, I'm just playing. <laughs> you see, what God is looking for today is people that can enjoy their salvation. You ever ran across the one that's so uptight about being serious about Jesus that you're like, oh, no. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Huh? See, when it comes to making this commitment, it's not out of some task-driven motivation that, man, I have to do. No, you don't. But when you start doing it, man, the, the, from the inside out, you start changing. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he'll bring it to pass. He'll bring this God-inspired life to pass. He'll bring those desires of your heart to pass. But the thing you have to understand, one of the greatest truths that you're ever going to see is, is that this passage in Psalm 37, it is a game changer for believers. It should be at the top of your, of your playlist. Psalm 30, the, the, these couple of verses right here. Because if you put it into practice, it will change your life. It develops your faith. See, there's no other way of discovering this life that God has for you, this inspired way of living outside of faith. you got to believe this stuff. You've got to believe that God's going to give you the strength to do the uncomfortable thing. You've got to believe that God's going to give you favor on the job for the promotion that you're believing for. And two other people have already got it ahead of you. And you've got to use your faith to believe that instead of complaining. Because every time, thus says the Lord. Every time you complain, go on, say it, you remain. See, you, 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 you will never advance complaining. And maybe the best way that I could describe faith is this. It's our positive response to what God has already provided for us Amen. by grace. See, grace, God's grace, he's already provided. Our job is by faith to respond to it. It's just like these folks that, that are getting baptized today. This is their statement of faith. Not just to us publicly, but the hosts of heaven and the kingdom of darkness have to sit there and take it. They have to watch. Yeah. I, I, I need you to leave here with this reality today. There's, there's more to life going on than just the, you sucking air and taking up space on the planet. There is a real world happening that you and I can't see. You got, you've, got to, you've got to understand. So when you take these steps of faith and you're trusting God, that's when you begin to accomplish the life he's got for you. And, and, and there's nothing, now when I say this, when it comes to developing your faith, trust, delight, commit. Because there is nothing in the life of a believer that will replace time in God's word. It is, I'm telling you, it is, and, and you know, I, I bring this up quite often because as people of faith, we, we have to understand God is not looking for legalism and religion. That doesn't work. There is no religion on the planet that has ever been successful in discovering God. It doesn't work like that. This is why Jesus came. But when you put time in the word, and, and I remind you all of this all the time, 
God knows that you're busy people. This is why we try to make things available for you and simplify them so that if nothing else, you could pull these scriptures off your YouVersion app and you could sit down and you can just meditate it. You could think about it. This is how you discover your new life. And for me personally, I think hands down, the Joshua, I call it the Joshua 1-8 principle. Hmm? I believe it is the key in a successful life in, in Christ. Check this out. Now, I'm using the Amplified here. I really like the wording. But in Joshua 1-8, now remember, you have to interpret this passage in light of the New Testament covenant that you're in. It's no longer legalism, Okay. But the, the, the principle, the spiritual reality is still truth. This book of the law, it shall not depart from your mouth. What's that mean? You got to talk it, man. You've got to be talking the word of God. It shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall read it. You shall meditate it when you get time. Is he for real right now? Doesn't he understand I got stuff to do? Day and night. But why? Because that book, the Bible, God's word, it is spiritual. It's not just information. You all have heard me talk about this many times. And when the word gets into your soul and begins to change the way you think, as a matter of fact, if I'm not, Romans chapter 12 makes it very clear that if we present ourselves to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service, and we are not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by renewing our mind to the things of God. You see, when you change the way you think, when you wake up thinking about God, now, now God knows, he, he understands that where we're at, uh, you know, like this morning, uh, I woke up and there was a country song on my mind. And some of you are like, what? Well, I like country music, man. Okay? Now, so I had to switch gears. Because I'm preaching this morning. I can't come up here with a country music song on my I mean, I, don't get me wrong, they do sometimes. You know, like last week, Zach Brown, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, so it's not like it doesn't happen because what you put in, yeah. So when you put the word of God in, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Just think if your coworkers heard you talking the word of God, not you highlighting their junk. Oh, you a good Christian boy. You shouldn't be acting like No. What if they heard you talking the word of God and they're like, man, I, and then they come to you because they just saw you do something dumb earlier in the, on, on, the sh on the shift. And like, yeah, and you're like, and then you get the opportunity because what just happened, they came to you because they heard you talking the word of God, but they saw some of the fruit in your life and they didn't line up and they came to you and, you, and you're like, ding, 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 ding. Pulpit just came out. Of the, right there you go. Opportunity. And then you, and, but don't try to be somebody you're not. Be real with them. Like, yes, and that's what makes Jesus so wonderful. He knew in all my junk, in all my mistakes, he still gave me this word to do, to talk, to be. This is why I'm still transforming. I'm becoming this person. But just like me, I don't do it right all the time. And when you tell them that, all of a sudden, that pressure and stuff that they've been beat down with religion half their life with, all of a sudden, they're like, like, like the Greeks told Paul at Mars Hill, they said, you know what? We, we'll, we'll hear you again on this matter. That's, that's all we want. We want somebody to be willing to listen to us again about it. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You'll meditate in it day and night so that you'll be careful to do every. <laughs> why, why you got to use words like everything? Huh? You'll be careful. You'll be careful to do everything in accordance with all that's written in it. You mean like. Love your enemy? That one? Huh? You mean like give and it'll be given to you? That one? You mean walk in love with people? You mean forgive people? You mean go, Jesus, you want me to go the extra mile? 
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, but my boss isn't here. You mean you want me to do the, You want me to work the same way when, that, when my boss is here that when he's not? I know. Did you know that was in the Bible? That is crazy, right? I mean, come on. You're really pushing it now, Holy Spirit. Yeah. How, do, how does this change happen? Meditating in the word. Because what happens is you begin to see yourself in that book. And then it makes this radical statement. For then, say then. then. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will be successful. But what comes first? The word. Talking the word, meditating the word, doing the word, talking the word, meditating the word, doing the word, talking the word, meditating the word, doing the word. The, the Apostle James actually says this. If you just hear the word and never do anything, you deceive yourself. Don't blame the devil. He just sitting back laughing at you. And, and since we are these chosen people of God, these fearfully and wonderfully made people. Remember last week we talked about this? We are the seed of Abraham. We are heirs according to the promise. And that's the thing. God's plan from the beginning is to use each one of our lives as a testimony. I really believe he takes it a step further. He wants to use our lives to be a blessing. Let's go back to our key, one of our key texts from last week in Genesis chapter 12. This is where, now remember, as the seed of Abraham, as sons and daughters of Abraham, we should look to him as the example. And God, in Genesis chapter 12, God goes to Abraham and he speaks to him and he says this, I'm going to make you great. Hmm? As the seed of Abraham, why don't you put your name there? Annie, God's going to make you great. Huh? You, Stephen, God's going to make you great. He says, I will bless you, make your name great, watch this, and you will be a blessing. And I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you, and then you, all the families of the earth, will be blessed. Here, here, here's the thing I love about this. You, you got to, I got to thinking about this, Andy. God prophesied Abraham's life before any of it happened. Because when he went to Abram, was his name at the time, no kids, no nothing. But God saw his heart. And God prophesied. God spoke. Because see, anytime God speaks, it's prophecy. And, and I got to thinking about that. God's word is inspired. It is prophetic. And so when you speak what God says... When you say what your dad says, you're speaking prophetically. I, I was thinking about, uh, there's, there's a song out, that, uh, I think last year called Rattle, but it's out, it, it comes out of the book of Ezekiel, where he said, and I love, when you read the book of Ezekiel, constantly he says this statement, son of man, what's that mean? That's us. He said, can these bones live? And the son of man says, well, God, you, you know. And then he said to the man, you prophesy to these bones and you tell life to come back into them. Yeah. Listen, there, whatever it is in your life that's looking dormant and it feels like it's not going to make it. Remember, Joshua 1, 8 principle, this book of the law, this word of God, it shouldn't, it shouldn't leave your mouth. Whatever, the, whatever situation you're facing right now, speak the word of God over that situation. Find promises from God's word and begin to speak that. Well, I tried it and it didn't work. No, that's not how it works, man. It, it tried you and you quit. Because God can't lie. And if you say what your father says, you're not lying. Even if you don't see it yet. The Bible said, God told Abraham, I'm going to make you rich. But I saw that and I'm like, baby, I like that one right there. I'm the seed of Abraham. Money cometh. <laughs> now, I know some of y'all, you, you go to thinking religious. Well, you know, the money's the root of all evil. That's actually not what the Bible says. It's the love of money. Money in and of itself is, it, it really, it's nothing. And, and, and lately it's becoming more and more nothing. But uh, it, <laughs> My bad. My, my, what was I thinking? But you know what I've discovered over the years about money? All it does is reveal more of what you are. That's all it does. So if you get more money and you're a knucklehead, well, all you got to do is watch professional sports. You'll find out real quick. Yeah. 
Come on. Anyway, back to my sermon. See, God began to prophesy Abraham's life. See, in Galatians chapter 3, where, where the New Testament is talking to us, instructing us that we are the seed of Abraham, you got to know that only those that are in Christ are the sons of Abraham that are the seed of Abraham. And the Bible says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, if you ever want to know what you've been redeemed from, go to Deuteronomy 28 and read the curse. There's some stuff in there, man. And you've been redeemed from it. Why? So that the blessing, the blessing. Oh, too soon? Yeah. Listen, man, I, I know, I know my, the, my Thanksgiving people, we, we don't want to go ju jump right to Christmas. But it's, it's all about Jesus. All right? So we'll take a break for Thanksgiving and worship and enjoy Thanksgiving, and we'll go right back into celebrating Jesus. My tree's up at home. That's right. Listen, like, I can't believe you. Believe that. It's up. One, two, three. I got four of them so far up. Yeah. I love Christmas. A couple of you excited, come like, well, I'm just not ready for all that. Well, it's all what you make it. I mean, you know, what's the name I'm looking for, Ebenezer? Um, no, nah, I'm just, I'm just, playing. stop it. Man. Huh? Christ redeemed us so that the blessing of Abraham would come on us, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And it all starts with God giving Abraham one simple assignment, one step of faith, go where I'm telling you. See, for some of you all today, it, it's, not, it's not so much going where God's telling you, it, it's doing something that he's probably told you to do more than once already, and you just kind of, if you're like me, I, I'm, I'm slow at sometimes responding to the Lord, you know? Lord, is that you? You are his child, right? <laughs> yeah. Go where I'm telling you. And, and I know it sounds over simple. I get it. But Jesus is simply asking this one thing of us today. Trust, delight, and commit. Go where I'm telling you. Do what I'm asking you. One decision at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, one inspired life at a time. Just trust me and do what I'm asking you to do. See, when we do it God's way, I know it doesn't make sense, you all. But when he says, I'm going to bless you and make you great so that you can be a blessing, that's what he meant. Stop trying to make it happen. Just do what he asks you to do. If he says be a blessing to somebody and you only got $10 in your pocket and you have this, un you have this unction inside you, bless somebody with that $10, Here here's what's going to happen right away. First of all, the, the enemy is going to start manipulating you. Well, that's not really God. Why would God tell you to give your money away? Then if that one doesn't work, he'll come to you with this. Well, it's just $10. That doesn't mean anything. You know, $10 doesn't amount to nothing. It, it would to somebody. If they, didn't have, if they had zero. Huh? I mean, today, $10 will buy you a Happy Meal. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Not even that. <laughs> this is why faith is so important for us. You've got to trust God when he asks you to do these things. The Bible says in the book of Jude, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith. The foundation of that is the word of God. You continually, progressively spend time in it because when you hear the word and you hear the word and you hear the word, what happens is faith is being developed inside you. And the next thing you know, you find yourself taking these steps of faith. Are you with me? See, ultimately, because of who God has made us, we have to take our God-ordained lives. We have to exercise our influence. Let me ask you something. How many of you actually, not in some arrogant way, 
But when you know who you are, you see yourself as an influencer. You look for opportunity to influence. Huh? See, I need you leaving here today. If you're going to live this inspired life, you need to actually see yourself as an inspirational person. That means some of you may have to do something to invest in your self-worth. And according to the Apostle Paul, I love this. It's according to, the, when, you, when you read his letter in the book of Ephesians, it's according to the power that works in us. Amen. You know, that whole statement is this, that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And most people, we quote that and we stop, but the verse doesn't stop there. And it says, according to the power that's in us. Amen. Yeah. See, I believe this is Isaiah's point. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. See, that's the thing with the people that are being baptized today. They're willing and obedient to step out in faith and get up in front of all of you all and make this bold declaration. For those of you that are being baptized today, our ushers are in the back. If you would, we'll dismiss you right now. Go ahead and head to the back so that you can get ready. And let me give you some instruction for those that are, that are here with people being baptized, family members. Once I turn things over to Daryl in the baptism tank, I want you to make yourself at home. If you want to come down front here and take pictures, this is a very special moment for your family. So please uh, make yourself at home and, and we'll kind of instruct you on that in just a minute. Uh, but while they're getting ready, I'm not done with you. Y'all okay? You got a few more minutes? All right. Ephesians chapter 3, the Bible says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Right? This is the thing that I want us understanding today. If, if, if we trust this, if you took this one passage and you put the Joshua 1-8 principle on it, you meditate in it. How many of you believe God is able? Amen. You sure? Yeah, but what if... What if it doesn't look like it right now? He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or think. I'm just going to tell you, I think big. When I think about our new building, I think, I think big. Nice parking lot. Big lobby. I think big. Is that okay if we think big? Yes. Huh? I mean, we're pretty full. We got some room in here today, but we're pretty full. How, how, how many of y'all believe in for me that we can double our sanctuary size? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Now, hang on. Hold up. Because that means you got to double your money. <laughs> not you. Now, you know what I'm I'm not looking at you as a source. But if, we're, if this is our church and we're believing God for double the size... Well, he's just not raining buildings out of heaven. You know, that'd mess up something, man. He's going to deal with people. Yeah, he's going to. And, and, and he's already working stuff out right now. He's orchestrating things right now. So when it comes time, I know some of you say, well, why'd you put a new carpet if we're getting rid of the building? Well, I don't know when that's going to happen. And I got tired of seeing that mess. Y'all ruined it with all your coffee stains. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, Amen. abundantly, above all we could ask or think according to the power that's in us. You see, when I was, as I was kind of meditating on this today, just kind of thinking about my talk, I cannot help but wonder how many of us, when it comes to supernatural stuff like that, when it comes to a life of faith, how many of us, we find ourselves following logic instead of God? Well, Chad, that really doesn't make sense. I don't, why, would, why would God ask me to do that? See, it's kind of like baptism, really. I mean, you think about it. In the natural, being dumped in some water, I mean, really, what's the big deal? In the natural, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? But spiritually, according to Jesus, it is an eternal statement that we make. It is that declaration that we belong to him. See, God knows each of us exactly where we are, what we're going through, 
what we will do and what we won't do, our mistakes, our successes, our failures, and he's still calling us. He still has great plans for each and every one of us. But as long, as long as we're okay living without more of God in our life, we will. If you're okay with just the mediocre, if you're okay with right where you're at, you don't want any more of God, he loves you. He'll accept you into heaven, and, and that's where you'll be. But the moment you start taking steps of faith toward God, the more inspired your, be life, your life becomes for God. Amen. Listen to this prayer that the Apostle Paul, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul prays. <laughs> Apostle Paul prays. Yeah. Sometimes, you ever get tongue-tied with stuff? This is a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, but I just wanted to highlight these few statements and this is something I pray over you all all the time. I pray over my own life. Number one is this, that we, em, that we embrace the spirit of wisdom and revelation in who he is. Number two, Lord, that we know the hope of your calling. I know some of you think, well, I, I'm not called. Wrong. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you're called. That's how you gave your life to him. He said, nobody comes to the Father on their own. He's always calling. Huh? That we embrace the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That we know the hope of his calling. And that we walk in the greatness of his power. Amen. I mean, that's something I speak over my life all the time. Father, thank you that I walk in the greatness of your power. Living inspired, guys, it starts with you being willing and obedient. Living inspired means there's going to be times when you have to step out beyond your own abilities. You're going to have to trust. You're going to have to delight. You're going to have to commit your way to God. This is why God told us that he would bless us and make us great so that we could be a blessing. He doesn't show favoritism. He's like, uh, you, yeah, you, no. Yeah, no. Doesn't work like that. All the, <laughs> y'all ready? For, I don't know if you can handle this one or not. All the promises of God in Christ are what? Yes and what? Amen. What's amen mean? So be it. All in Christ, his promises are yes and so be it. So you got to find one and so be it. And that means you gotta, you got to so be it until. Having done all to stand, you're going to stand until. See, this revelation that you begin to put into practice, this simple principle, this Joshua principle, you meditate the word, you meditate the word, you meditate the word, and the next thing you know, it's no longer information, it's revelation, and now you're speaking the word. See, when you say what your father says, you're prophesying to your dead bones. You're prophesying to that dead situation. When you say what your father says, you begin to speak life over your situation. And it may not happen overnight, but if you continue to practice this. Let me give you this one last passage and I'm gonna turn things over to Daryl. Because when you follow the Joshua principle, he says very clearly that if you put these, in, these things into practice, you will make your way prosperous. You will. And you'll have good success. Deuteronomy 28 says it like this. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will be above only and not beneath. If you do the commandments of the Lord. Once again, not legalistic, not religious. If you do what God's telling you to do. See, today, these folks are taking their next step of faith, getting in the tank, giving their lives to Jesus, taking this bold declaration of faith, acknowledging that they belong to God. So our job is to encourage them, right? To inspire them. When you leave here today, be expecting the power of the Lord to use you at the restaurant, at your home, in your neighborhood, if you're going shopping, tomorrow when you clock in. Yeah. Live an expectant life that, that will make you live an inspired life. Amen? Let, 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 let's uh, take just a second, and, and then we'll turn things over. But if you're in the room, or if you're listening or watching, and you've never given your life to Jesus, man, this is what all this is about. This is where it starts. You have to believe that Jesus is real, that he is alive today. And if you do, and you've never made that declaration of faith, well, today's the day. 
We're going to say this very simple prayer, and you're going to take a step of faith, and your life is going to change from this day forward. It doesn't mean you're a part of this church. Uh, you know, that's not what we're looking for. You know, we would love it if God leads you here, but the most important thing you'll ever do is take that first step of faith and give your life to Jesus. So let's pray together. If you're listening or watching, say the prayer with us and let's give Jesus a chance. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. For more information on Victory Life Church, check us out at victorylifeky.com. Thank you so much for listening.